Now, the invasion of Ukraine by Russia in late February this year has continued to worsen the outlook of already inflated global food prices as the war has disrupted the food supply chain, shooting up prices of food across the globe. However, in Nigeria, the latest figures from the National Bureau of Statistics on selected food price watch reports shows that there was an upward increment in the prices of selected food items in the month of July 2022. The NBS in its report disclosed that uh, the average price of one kilogram of white beans rose by 23.22% from 444 Naira 21 Kobo in July 2021 to 547 Naira 38 Kobo in July 2022. While an average price of one kilogram of tomatoes increased on a year-on-year -year basis by 7.71% from 414 Naira 83 Kobo in July 2021, to 446 Naira, 81 Kobo in July 2022. Meanwhile, the unrelenting rise in prices of food staples keeps pushing many households below the poverty line as the major consumer staples showed significant increases year on year and monthly with no sign of abating. Well, let's talk about this more and give insights into this development as we chart a way forward concerning issues around food security amid inflationary pressure. I'm being joined via Zoom by the Deputy President of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Gabriel Idahosa. Thank you so much. It's good to have you uh, what, via Zoom today. Uh, thank you for your time, Mr. Idahosa. Thank you. You too. Yes. Uh, let's get talking. First, I am worried. The United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization is saying about 19.4 million persons uh, will face food crisis across the country, uh, already facing as we are moving June, July, August. Uh, how much of a worry is this for you? Well, the, the fundamentals for the worry have been there. It's just been uh, aggravated by the Ukraine-Russia war. Uh, if you have the continent, take Africa, it's a very similar situation in Latin America. Africa, 1.2 billion people. The size of the, the, the share size of the African continent is three times the size of the United States of America. So both in terms of size, in terms of population, we have a continent that cannot itself. Even though it, has, it is located in the entire geography from the temperate regions to the tropical region of North Africa, to the middle of Africa, which is, which is, which is tropical, to southern part of Africa, which is temperate. So we can actually, we wanted to use all the products, including wheat, that we import from uh, a country like Ukraine. So the, 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 the fundamental, that's why it's so important to stress that this is not a crisis that just happened because of Ukraine. This is a more fundamental lack of capacity of Africa to feed itself that just gets highlighted whenever there is any crisis, whether it is Ukraine, whether it is uh, Europe, whether it's America that has a crisis, we, we immediately import the crisis into us. So it, it, it's, it's, it will continue to be that until Africa addresses the need to feed herself and in fact be a net exporter of all, all practically all agricultural products to other countries. Mm. Well, it's a good way to start, but insecurity, of course, global issues, local effects, inflation and all of that are uh, crept in to all of these uh, issues around food uh, at the moment. So are we going to continue like this? Uh, many will tell you that they give almost double of the amount they used to give to <laughs> maybe wives and you know housekeepers and whoever gets food stuff to the house. It's now double, and you will agree with me. Are we going to continue like this, considering these factors that I highlighted? The short term, yes. Uh, obviously, you can massively increase uh, food production in six months, one year. So it, in the short term, we are going to continue. What has happened is that a lot of families are sacrificing both the quality and the quantity of food they consume now. Um, that can be very severe at the lower income levels. At the medium and higher income levels, they are also affected. But 
Generally, that's what you find the nutritional health of a lot of people in Nigeria now are suboptimal. People have to find ways to survive. That is, eat to survive. Eat to improve your, your, your nutritional health. Because eat anything to stay alive till the next day. That's what's happening at perhaps 50 to 60% of Nigerian population, if not more. The rest at the upper level are still able to afford some of the luxuries in terms of choice of food that they can eat. But, um, that, that's going to happen. It's easy to, to, to see that there's no immediate solution to that. In the long term, of course, in the medium long term, of course, there is a lot that can be done. The security situation can be improved and should be improved, not just in Nigeria, but in other countries in Africa that have security issues. Without resolving the security issues, you cannot increase food production. So that security issue is it's actually a necessary condition for improving the situation. We have to find a way as a country, as a continent, to stop being essentially a continuous theater of war across the African continent. If you always find pockets of war going on and civil communal crisis all around several parts of, of the continent, which now means that uh, food production from actual farming to processing to storage cannot be done optimally. But in the short term, uh, we, we, we unfortunately um, are permanent uh, host of uh, hunger, you know, in, in the short term, Africa as a continent. Until we have the, we, we pull ourselves up to address the essential factor of feeding ourselves in a way that is sustainable without having to depend on the outside the continent. But also, it also means looking at what we regard as our staple foods or if we must eat. For example, in Nigeria, until 30 years ago, bread was not a staple food. A lot of families, didn't have bread as part of their meals. A lot of families even did not have rice as a daily meal until perhaps 30, about 30 years ago when true food products became almost like a necessity. So there's the aspect of improving our capacity to produce food. There's also the aspect of questioning our, our, our diet habits that have changed as a result of uh, importing a lot of foreign foods that are, we have now adopted as staple foods uh, in, in, in Nigeria. And also, that also applies to uh, some other countries. Uh, 30 years ago, the, the shortage of wheat and bread would not be a crisis in Nigeria. A lot of people have their breakfast with several other products that have nothing to do with bread. So those are the two dimensions. Produce a lot of what you regard as staple foods and then we think about consuming with foods that our parents and grandparents have consumed for centuries and have lived well. Mm. Let me take you uh, to, let's, let's talk about this, uh, let's take this discussion to another uh, angle, and that's the impact of the supply chain issues uh, that we've had, of course, with the Russia and Ukraine crisis. But finally, even what finally gets here, Manufacturers and business people are worried about duty boardings. They have duties to pay that they say sometimes they are alleged that it's even more than what is expected. And of course, we, the uh, consumers, will have to pay more because they'll spread these bills one way or the other on us. What are you hearing with regards to customs and uh, their issues when it comes to, you know, letting your members or members of the OCCI and other uh, chambers or business people uh, get their goods and services, particularly raw materials? Actually, in the last uh, one year or more, a lot of the members in the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and other private sector players are saying that the cost of uh, moving a container from the port in Lagos to, say, Ikeja or Ikeja Industrial Estate or Elpidi Industrial Estate, is higher than the cost of bringing the container from China. And, and the figures are just amazed to get a container out of the port through all the mandate points and hassles 
to get it to your factory is costing more than what you paid the shipper to bring it from China. So that, that's just an illustration of the structural issue we have in our economy. There are certain things that are taken for granted that you receive, you can turn around 24 hours, 48 hours in the port, whether you are importing or exporting, get your goods arrive in port in 24 hours, 48 hours, they are out of the ports to your factory, or when you are exporting, you bring the goods to the port in, in 48 hours, it's gone to, it's off in vessel going to the, your, your import at another part of the world. These are all essentially man-made man uh, situations that has to do with the way the, the, our infrastructure, infrastructure is managed. It's not so much the quality of infrastructure, but how we manage the ports can be far more efficient than they are now. The movement from the port through the power to the expressway to factory can be faster, cheaper, far cheaper than what was now. All the issues are managed by the individual that are hired or contracted to provide the services and other people who now cash in on it and set up all sorts of illegal and illegal checkpoints and, uh, and, and tools all around the place, from inside the port to outside the port, you have people who have created a whole illegal toll industry that is so difficult to, to, to remove. And that, that's, that's the plight of clearly most of our members. If you ask any major, even small importer or exporter, it's the same story that you are getting. Because what is unfortunate is that these are man-made. It's important to continue to say this. They are not things that are created by the infrastructure. This fall as they are now can be a lot more efficient. If the human beings walk in there and with everybody around you from security to all the agencies involved, decide that they want to run it efficiently and smoothly and transparently without so many man-made uh, hurdles. Mm. Almost finally, uh, in that same report which we're looking at, uh, it shows that one way or the other, some experts are saying uncertainty looms uh, because when you see inflation uh, on the other side, uh, you also see uh, the central bank trying to rein in inflation, increasing rates, and uh, many say that is not really working uh, at the moment. So uh, what's the outlook for the business environment, the business community, uh, if we continue with business as usual? Well, the, the, the outlook is, is challenging. It has been challenging. You, you only get a slight aggravation of the challenge of, in the situation by some of these um, developments you have referred to. For example, the inflation in Nigeria is caused by the fact that we are not producing enough locally and we have imports. And so that cannot change by any kind of monetary policy. Monetary policy will not suddenly make uh, wheat available and the price comes down. A monetary policy cannot suddenly make rice available and in large quantities and come down. And if you look, look at cement, it's a very good example. There's so much cement, we are importing cement, so you don't need any monetary policy or anybody to do anything. We, we have addressed the fundamentals of how to produce efficient cement and, and export for the world after getting our, 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 enough for us. So we trying to affect inflation by this movement of interest rates is, is certainly not going to work mm -hmm. because they don't affect the fundamentals. The fundamental in Nigeria is that you are a middle and a low income person. You have nothing to save. You have absolutely nothing to save. So whether Central Bank increase the interest rate on deposit or not really is irrelevant to you. Because whatever you earn now is not enough to keep you. So you are not you are not one of those people looking at the interest rates of Central Bank. Oh, the interest rates are going up, let me start to save some more money. The number of 
economic operator in Nigeria at that level, looking at CBN interest rates and say, let me save more, we then reduce inflation, are extremely few. They are those at the very top of the, of the income ladder, the very high income and medium high income earners. So that interest rates, um, you know, juggling does not, does not affect inflation because of the way our inflation, our inflation is cost push. It's the cost that is pushing the inflation. It's not the demand. It's not that Nigerians have money. They want to buy more food. They want to buy more cars. They want to buy more clothes. And they have money in their pocket. And you are, oh, don't spend that money. Come and save it. You a higher interest. That's not the case. Most Nigerians simply don't have the money. So whether you, <laughs> interest rates are not, are not in the picture at all. And I think at that point has been made uh, very strongly to the central bank. And I guess they get it, but they just seem to want to be seen to be playing along with the traditional monetary policy, what, what monetary economics say you do in this situation when it's shown you, you, you try to, you know, see if you can uh, manipulate the interest rates to call inflation. But that is not the case in Nigeria. It's, it's, not, it's certainly not going to do anything in, in the foreseeable future until, of course, we, our production significantly rises and our income flying on the increased production. It is production that increases income. It is not the figures. So if you increase salaries by 40%, and no goods are produced. You have not improved the quality of of the people. So that's why uh, the, the discussion should be uh, fundamentals. You, you need to address security, then we address infrastructure, and then the quality of life and the income of Nigerians will be meaningful. All then right. you can use monetary policy to say, now that you are getting more money, you have excess beyond what you need to survive, so you can start to save. So CBN says you can now save more because you are disposable income. You have income that you can make a discretionary decision. So if all your income is consumed in survival, there's no, no, no part of your income that is available for you to decide whether to save or to save. And so the considerations are uh, totally different. In, unlike, say, advanced economies where income levels are far higher than their basic needs. So at any point in time, they have some X to save. So Press raised movements by the central bank will, will make sense in, in those kind of economies, but certainly not, not in Nigeria. It's a good way to leave it. Interesting conversation. Mr. Gribel Dausa is the deputy president of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you so much, and do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.